Hello YouTube friends, it's Christmas Eve and uh, I'm going to be wrapping a few little bits and pieces of presents up. Now I've got a cup of tea, let's get some wrapping paper out of the way here. I've got some lovely wrapping paper and I'm, I'm not wrapping much up but uh, I thought I'd do it with you. Right, okay. I've also got some sparkly pens. See if they work for the labels. And a cup of tea. So this is a thing that I haven't had very long. I wonder if you can see it. I'll just move all the books out of the way. Put them down there. This is a little, uh, my daughter bought me this teapot. <laughs> Hello. Shall I tell you where this girl started um, sleeping? It must be warm. She goes around the back of the television. She settles down and sleeps there. And so I'll be watching something on the television and then suddenly a cat will appear from out the side of it. Mm. She's, this cat's a lot better. She's been very unwell and she's fine now. So I want to pour myself a cup of tea. So would you please um, settle down? So this is the year that we lost Norma and then much, much earlier in the year we lost her sister Prudence. And so I just have Cat Rita now and Sadie, who's asleep in the other room. Sadie and Rita are not friends. I'm not putting it very mildly. Sadie, um, it's open warfare between the two of them, which is a shame because all the cat dynamics changed after Norma died and uh, this one and then she got was very very unwell she was at the vets every other day for injections and she's a million times better than she was but in, in, in all of that she became really quite um, nervous and um, reclusive and so she would sleep in little dark corners all day long and and Sadie was just allowed to sort of take on the top dog slot or top cat, top cat. And uh, and it's kind of like rules the roost now. And it's a shame because uh, this little girl doesn't get a look in. So where I feed the cats, we well, might have seen sometimes I feed the cats there, which is a big sort of um, like a big table. Well, I built a barrier up the middle uh, with um, boxes so that I feed her on one side and Sadie on the other so that she gets um, her fair shares. So isn't it funny, Norma <coughs> would have been doing this in the past <coughs> and now there's a vacancy on my knee and you've decided you're going to take it, haven't you? And she's forgiven me for all those trips to the vet which she didn't like at all. She's forgiven me. Anyway, this teapot I bought this um, little stand for it. I wonder if you can see it. Uh, it makes the teapot very hot, but because it's enamel. But underneath it, there's a little candle that keeps the tea hot for. I take the tea bag out so it doesn't get very bitter, and the candle keeps it hot for ages and ages. So I'll just put that over there. So this is a nice square box. This will be really easy to wrap. Make sure there's no price on there. Nope. You don't know what this is, do you? It's a surprise. There we go. Some penguins there. Now I wonder if you remember me making this a couple of years ago. And this is Agnes's Christmas stocking. And I haven't got anything particular to put in that. But if you remember, I made Agnes's uh, advent calendar. That's gone down very well indeed. Very well. And uh, what the advent calendar was full of was little bits of Duplo, this sort of big Lego stuff. Said she's really enjoying her um, Christmas tree this year. I might just fill it full of little Christmas decorations uh, and then she can put those on the tree. So I'm going to use the stocking again this year in some way. So that'll be fun. There we go. Now I've got a few books for Agnes here. Agnes's favourite song is The Wheels on the Bus. So we've got a book about buses. But this is a beautiful book called How to Heal a Broken Wing uh, by Bob Graham, who's one of my favourite children's authors. And so 
I'm going to wrap those two up. I'll do them together though. I'll wrap those two up for her. Oh, and she's back from behind the telly again. She's very sweet though. She's purring her head off here. Good girl. Where you get your head out. Well, it's much, much later now. So this afternoon, while I was wrapping all these bits and pieces, I watched It's a Wonderful Life with uh, Donna Reed and James Stewart. Fantastic movie. And in fact, it was the last movie review that I, I did over on my Patreon channel that's what I was doing was reviewing movies for everyone and it was the last one and I reviewed it with John do you know I think we made a pretty poor job of it <laughs> because I haven't watched it for ages but I watched it today it's a fantastic movie so apologies to anyone who watched that movie review over on Patreon it was uh, it was quite funny but not very accurate okay so I'm pretty much finished now uh, with all the bits and pieces. I've still got quite a bit of mess to clear up here. But I've wrapped up everything I wanted to and I've written all the cards I wanted to and delivered a few. And now it's uh, Chris early Christmas Eve and I'm going to edit this and post this for you. And I really just wanted to pop in and say Merry Christmas. And that I'm really looking forward to seeing you all on New Year's Eve at 10 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time for the live stream. Now, last year I read the Polar Express and I thought I would do a little bit of a reading this year and I've been thinking and thinking. I've looked at lots of different books, uh, all sorts of things that I thought I might read from. But a few days ago over on Instagram I posted a picture of Eileen the Goose and the, uh, it said, um, Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat, don't worry about Eileen, she's safe with me, hashtag vegetarian Christmas dinner. So I thought I would read from this book, which is called A Poem for Every Night of the Year. So I'm going to find, not tonight's, because tonight's, I'll tell you what tonight's is, tonight's is quite predictably... The one you all know. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Now you know that one. I'm not going to I'm not going to read that one to you. I'm going to go back just two or three days and I'm going to read you a poem from the 20th of December, which is only a little while ago. Now, when I posted that picture of Eileen. There were a few comments that said, oh, I was a little bit worried there when I saw you holding Eileen. Thought that maybe she was Christmas dinner after all. Never. She never will be. And this is a poem by Benjamin Zephaniah, who's an amazing uh, poet. I, I like him very much. And um, it's written in a bit dialecty, but I'm going to kind of read it how I would read it. And it's not about a goose. 
it's about a turkey. Here we go. Benjamin Zephaniah, Talking Turkey. Be nice to the turkeys this Christmas, because turkeys just want to have fun. Turkeys are cool, turkeys are wicked, and every turkey has a mum. Be nice to you turkeys this Christmas. Don't eat it, keep it alive. It could be your mate and not on your plate. So yo turkey, I'm on your side. I got lots of friends who are turkeys and all of them fear Christmas time. They want to enjoy it. They say humans destroyed it and humans are out of their mind. Yes, I got a lot of friends who are turkeys. They all have a right to a life, not to be caged up, genetically made up by any farmer and his wife. Turkeys just want to play reggae. Turkeys want to hip hop. Can you imagine a nice young turkey saying, I cannot wait for the chop. Turkeys like getting presents. They want to watch Christmas TV. Turkeys have brains and turkeys feel pain in many ways like you and me. I knew a turkey called Turkey. He said, Benji, explain to me please, who put the turkey in Christmas and what happened to Christmas trees? I said, I'm not too sure, Turkey, but it's nothing to do with Christ Christmas. Humans get greedy and waste more than they need be and businessmen make lots of cash. Be nice to your turkeys this Christmas. Invite them indoors for some greens. Let them eat cake and let them partake in a plate of organic brown beans. <laughs> Be nice to your turkeys this Christmas and spare them the cut of the knife. Join Turkeys United and they'll be delighted and you'll make a new friend for life. <laughs> so apologies to anyone who's looking forward to their Christmas dinner tomorrow. But there's a little plea from the turkeys and the goose. Let's look after the goose, shall we? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Uh, that's why I wanted to come on and make this little video today with the cats and the wrapping presents and the, all the bits and pieces that I've been talking about. And I will see you again soon, uh, but definitely New Year's Eve. I'm making the snacks for the sofa now. Enjoy your Christmas, whatever you're doing. Take care, everybody.